Hello everyone. So in this pre-lecture tutorial, we're going to discuss how to draw Lewis structures for compounds that have multiple bonds. So far, the Lewis structures that we have drawn so far in class have involved molecules or polyatomic ions where there are only single bonds connecting the atoms together. However, there are a fair number of compounds and polyatomic ions that require the use of multiple bonds. So that means double bonds, which would consist of two pairs of two electrons for a total of four electrons. So again, we have double bonds, which represent four shared electrons. We also have sometimes triple bonds, which represent six shared electrons total. And so sometimes these types of bonds are necessary to properly draw the Lewis structure of an element, I'm sorry, a structure of a compound or of a polyatomic ion. And so the way that we figure that out is by still following the same rules of drawing Lewis structures like we have been so far, except what's going to happen is when we're done with the process, there's going to be an atom in the structure that has not satisfied the octet rule, and yet we're already out of electrons that we can add to the structure. When that happens, then that's when we would go and we would actually modify the structure to incorporate multiple bonds. And really the best way to see that is to actually go through a couple of examples. So let's suppose that I want to draw the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. So again, notice that the central atom should be the atom that has the fewest amount of atoms in the formula, so that would be carbon. And if I take the formula apart, carbon would contribute four electrons, since again it's in group 14. And oxygen, there are two of them, but each oxygen should contribute six electrons, since it's in group 16, so that's six electrons for each oxygen. If I go ahead and add this up, then basically what I'm going to get is 16 electrons total. 6 times 2 is 12 plus 4, that's 16 electrons for this structure. So I'm going to start putting the structure together by connecting the oxygens to the carbon, which is the central atom. So I've just used 4 electrons for the two single bonds, connecting each of the oxygens to the carbon. That leaves me 12 electrons left to place. So again, I would start with the outer atom. So I'm going to have to start placing these electrons on the oxygens. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 electrons. So notice I've already used up all of my electrons, but each oxygen does obey the octet rule because basically there are eight electrons around each oxygen. But notice that carbon only has the two electrons from each of the single bonds for a total of four electrons. Basically carbon is missing four electrons and I'm out of electrons that I can add to the structure. The only way to fix this is if I actually take two electrons from the oxygen on the left and two electrons from the oxygen on the right and have those shared between the carbon and the, between the carbon and the oxygen so that would make the structure look like this and if you notice now every atom obeys the octet rule but in order to make the structure work i needed to include two double bonds. So notice each bond represents two electrons, and so if I have a double bond, that represents four electrons involved in this double bond. Let's try one more. Let's try drawing a Lewis structure for the nitrate ion. So again, we're going to do what we have been doing. We're going to signal which is the central atom. That should be the nitrogen because it's the atom that's present in the least amount in the formula. And we're going to take the formula apart. We're going to find the number of valence electrons contributed by nitrogen. Here's nitrogen in group 
15, so that means each nitrogen contributes five valence electrons. There's only one nitrogen anyway, so that means five valence electrons from the nitrogen. I have three oxygens, and as we learned in the previous example, each oxygen contributes six valence electrons. But notice also I have a negative charge on this nitrate ion, so that means I have to add one more valence electron. Putting all that together, 6 times 3 is 18, plus 5 is 23, plus one more, that's 24 valence electrons. So I'm going to put together the structure. So nitrogen, and I'm going to connect each of the oxygens to the nitrogen. That involves six electrons, three single bonds each. So basically I've used up six electrons for those three single bonds. That leaves me with 18 valence electrons left over. And so if I go ahead and add those 18 valence electrons, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And once again, I add them to the outer atoms first before I can add them to the central atom, but notice that by the time I use up the 18 valence electrons, I have none left over, but this nitrogen only has six valence electrons around it, and it hasn't met the octet rule. And so what that means is I'm going to have to go and lend it a pair of electrons from one of the oxygens. And so if I do that, now the structure looks like this. So notice now every atom meets the octet rule. And so since this is my final structure of my polyatomic ion, I enclose it in square brackets and include the charge in the upper right hand corner. So go ahead and work on the follow-up assignment. We'll be again doing more and more practice with drawing these Lewis structures in the next couple of days. If there are any questions, by all means email or ask your questions in class. All right, have a good night.